Okay, this is section 401, Relations and Functions, part one. So the first definition is that of a relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. It's a set of input and output values. There are four ways to represent a relation that we're going to talk about. Actually, when you get in Algebra 2, you might talk about some other ways, but we're going to talk about the four ways that we're going to do it in Algebra 1. So a set of ordered pairs is the first way you would represent a relation. And a set of ordered pairs, you have to remember that an ordered pair is an X comma Y. So that's your input and your output. So the first way is a set of ordered pairs. So I'm just going to give you an example. It could look like this. It could be negative 3 comma 4, 3 comma negative 1, 4 comma negative 1, and 4 comma 3. There's an example of a relation, just a set of ordered pairs. Notice the set notation that's being used. So anytime you're writing a set of something, you're going to use your set notation. So this is set notation. All right, the second way to represent a, a relation is with a mapping diagram. And I'm just going to use the same set of ordered pairs, but this time I'm just going to change it to what it looks like in a mapping diagram. So this is going to be our input. This is our X, which we're going to call the domain in a minute. So the more times we hear it, maybe we'll remember it. And this is our Y, the output. This is our range. So again, you know, the more times that we hear this, maybe we will remember it better. So, let's see if I go up here, negative 3, 3, and 4, and 4. So, negative 3, 3, and 4. Just because that appears twice does not mean that I have to show it twice. So, negative 3, 3, 4, and 4. So, I just need the 4 once. All right, range would be your Y values. That's your output. You have 4, negative 1, negative 1, and 3. Typically, they're written in order, but I'm just going to write them down for right now. I've like least to greatest, so I'm just going to put them in the way that we saw them in the set of ordered pairs. And then you map it. Negative 3 gives you 4, so we map it to 4. Positive 3 gives you negative 1. 4 gives you negative 1. And 4 also gives you 3, so a mapping diagram. This way you can tell that negative 3 only maps to one thing, 3 only maps to one thing, 4 maps to two different things, so 4 is used twice. So a mapping diagram. The next way to represent a relation is a table of values. And I'm going to use the same set of ordered pairs that's above. Let me make my chart a little longer here. All right, so... The first point at the top is negative 3, negative 4. So negative 3, no, positive 4. And the other point is 3, negative 1, and then 4 to negative 1, and 4 to 3. And the last way we're going to represent a function is by the graph. So it's a set of ordered pairs, so our graph is going to be a set of ordered pairs. So I'm just going to plot my points. I'm going to go, let's see, negative 3, start at the origin, go 1, 2, 3 left, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's the point. And since this is notes, I'm going to label the point. So if you go back, you'll know which point's which. So 3, negative 1 means I go back to the origin. I go right 1, 2, 3, because it's positive 3, and down to negative 1. So that is 3, negative 1. I didn't put a negative 1 on here, but I will now. So negative 1. And then 4, negative 1 means I'm going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down to negative 1. So that one is 4, negative 1. And then 4, 3 means I'm going to go right. 1, 2, 3, 4, and up. 1, 2, 3. Looks much better on graph paper, but 
it was just easy to get all these on one page for you. All right, so there's your four ways to represent a function. You had a set of ordered pairs. You have a mapping diagram, a table of values, and a graph. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is what are these inputs called? Okay, they're the X value. They're called the domain of the relation. It's the set of all the inputs, also called the X coordinates. Of the ordered pair. So this is your inputs which is also your domain or your X coordinates. The range is your outputs. They're also called the Y coordinates. So vocabulary is very important that you make these connections. So the X value is the outputs, excuse me, the Y value is the outputs or the range. So domain, range, you can kind of think of this is D and R, it's alphabetical as X and Y are alphabetical. So domain for the X and range for the Ys. Right, let's look at these examples. We are going to Find the domain and the range. So first we're going to find the domain. The domain is your X values or your inputs. So this is your domain. And you just write it with set notation. So you need the little, the braces. And then you're just going to list the X values. Negative 5, negative 1, 3, and 4. And when you're putting your answers in Schoology, you're gonna, this is all on your keyboard and use no spaces. And you can type it right in. And typically your domain is written from, and, and your range as well, is written from least to greatest. All right, the range, which is your Y values or your output, is still gonna be written as a set and we're just going to list it out. It's already from smallest to largest. So 0, 2, 6, and 7. So that's the set of the Y values. So that's just how you find your domain and range. When you have a mapping diagram, we're going to look at some other examples. All right. Number two, we have a set of ordered pairs. So we're going to find our domain first. So so that's 0, 1, 3, 4, and 6. None of them repeat. So I'm just going to list them. 0, 1, 3, 4, and 6. And then your range is going to be your Y values. Which will be 1, 2, 5, 8, and 9. I just checked to see if any of them are repeating because I don't want to write them down twice. So 1, 2, 3, 5, oops, not 3. 8 and 9. So be careful. My eyes brought me to the 3. That's why I highlight them or underline them in the color that I'm writing them in so you can see where they're coming from. All right. 3 and 4 are problems like we were just working. So you want to pause the video for a minute and try to work those two. And then you can resume the video and check to see if you did it correctly. That would be fine with me. That might be a good thing for you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it if you want to pause the video and then resume to see if you wrote it down correctly. That would be good. All right. So, domain. Remember, it's the X values or the input. Write it in set braces because we write a set notation and you just list them. Negative 3, negative 2, 4, and 5. And then the range is your output or your Y. And we're just going to list them. Negative 3, 2, 4, and 8.
fixing my other problem so it looks natural when I post my notes. That looks a little bit better. All right, number four. We're going to start by finding the domain. So negative three, zero, two, four, and nine. Negative three, zero, two, four, and nine. Again, when you're putting these in Schoology, don't use spaces. And then range is your y values. So that's 12, 9, 7, 3, and negative 2. Now, these are actually not written in order. Like, I mean, as far as this is, this is going from the largest to the smallest. So we do want to write it from the least to the largest. So we're going to go backwards here. Negative 2, 3, 7, 9, and 12. Because typically they're written from the least to the greatest. And if you notice in the points, 12, 9, 7 was going from the greatest to the least. You just need to get in the habit of that. If it's on a multiple choice test or ACT or something like that, they're going to be written that way. The next thing we're going to talk about is a special type of relation. A special type of relation has a special name. It's called a function. So if it's, a, it's a relation, okay, but it's a special one. It's a relation that each element of the domain corresponds to exactly one element of the range. Okay, so one domain to exactly one element of the range. All right, so the hint to help you is just remember that the x values Do not repeat. Your y values, as far as just determining if the relation is a function, is not relevant, okay? That's something different, a one-to-one -one function that you might learn later. But basically, each element of the domain, that means 1x, corresponds to exactly one element of the range, which is your y's. In other words, you're looking to see if the x values repeat. If they don't repeat, it's a function. So in the next set of problems, we're just going to look at the problem and we're going to decide if, whether it's a function or not. All right, so if you look at this mapping diagram, you can see that negative 3 goes to negative 2, 0 goes to 7, and 4 goes to 1. So these x values are only being mapped to one of the y values. So this is a function. Okay. <clears throat> In the second problem, you have a set of ordered pairs. So I'm looking at the x values to see if they repeat. I have 4, 8, 1, 4. Okay, what stood out? The fact that there were two 4s being used, two x values. So this one is not a function. Because the x equals 4 was used twice, or it repeated, or it was mapped to a 1 and a negative 1. All right, so you can pause the video and try 3 and 4 and see what you think. All right, if you're looking at number three, if you notice you've got two mapped to negative three, but two is also mapped to positive three, so right there it's going twice, that means it's not a function. Okay, let's look at number four. You have in your x values negative seven, nine, 14, and seven, so none of the x values are mapped to more than one y value, so yes, this is a function. Right, there's another way to tell if you have a function, and that would be by using something called a vertical line test. 
and it's used to determine if a relation is a function. If it passes the graph or through the graph more than once, that means it's going to cross the graph at more than one point, then this relation will not be a function. Okay? So if it passes through more than one point on the graph of that relation, it's not going to be a function. All right, so I've given you an example, and I'm going to put some uh, points on here. This is negative 2, and this is positive 2, and this is 1, 2, 3. So if I put a dot here, the coordinates for that are 3, 2. And then the coordinates for this one are, this point would be 3, negative 2. Now what do you notice? They are, they are lined up vertically, vertical line test. And if I drew a vertical line through the graph just to check to see if it crossed the graph more than once. Here's your vertical line test. And if you look carefully at the two points that it hits, the coordinates for this one are 3, 2, and the coordinates for this one are 3, negative 2. So this is not a function because the 3 is being mapped to two different y values. So this is not a function. because it crossed the graph at two places, lined up vertically. Boom, boom, three, three, being mapped to two points. All right, so let's look at these next few examples. We're going to use our vertical line test to determine whether it's a function. And it only has to cross the graph twice at one place, and that's it. It's not a function. It can cross multiple times at two places, not a function. But if it does it one time, it's not a function. So if I take my ruler and I come across if I just drew vertical lines, I can already see that it's hitting the graph at more than two points here, and or more than one point here and here, 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 it doesn't matter. As long as it did it one time, this is not a function. All right, so number two, this one is an absolute value graph, the V-shaped. If I draw lines across this, it's not crossing more than once, so this is a function. Sorry, that was Mr. Harper that just came in and I shoot him out. I probably sound like a mouse. Um, we're about finished. All right, so this one is just a set of ordered pairs. It's not like a connected graph, but that when I draw a vertical line on that point, it's not crossing but one at a time. Here, one at a time. Here, it's crossing two places. That does it right there. This is not a function. So that's, what, that's the reason why it's not a function. It hit those two points. That means they share the same x value. All right, you want to try these three? You can. I'm going to go ahead and work those, and then I'm going to tell you what you're going to do with these practice problems. All right, I can tell right here I have a circle. Boom, it's going to hit two points on that vertical line test. It's going to share the same x value. This is not a function. And here I can check, doesn't hit but one, doesn't hit but one, doesn't hit but one, doesn't hit but one, doesn't hit but one. Doesn't hit but one, this one is a function. And here's a cubic function you'll see in Algebra 2, or it could be sine or cosine, I don't know. It depends. Anyway, as I'm going across this graph, I can see that I am never going to cross that graph at more than one point at a time with my vertical line, so this one is also a function. All right, so I have some practice problems on here. There's actually eight problems. You're going to put these in Schoology. Make sure you read the directions on Schoology, like how to type stuff in. So you're going to enter 1 through 8 on Schoology. Just as practice to see if you could do it after the lesson. You're also going to have a short assignment. So you're going to do these. Now I'm going to go down here. We haven't talked about this since before break. So domain. Remember that interval notation with the parentheses? Domain is how far left and right something goes, and we learned about interval notation. So remember the number lines. I'm going to kind of go across the, over this one with you, and then you can kind of try this one on Schoology. But I don't have, when we were doing the interval notation, we had just the inequality, so we were just on a straight line. Here we have a curved figure, but if you think about it, as this graph is going out to the left, it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So it's going to go to negative infinity. 
And as I look at this graph, it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So it's going to go to positive infinity. And remember, infinities always get parentheses because it's going to keep going. So domain is left to right. How far left, how far right? We're going to do several of these. I have another activity. All right, range is from top to bottom. So range is the Y value. So you notice here the graph doesn't just keep going. It actually starts right here at zero. It looks like the graph is going through zero. So it's going to start at zero because you go bottom to top, smallest to biggest. So I'm going to give it a bracket because it is actually going through zero. And then how far is this thing going to go? It's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. It's going to go to positive infinity. Now on Schoology, you're going to copy and paste the infinity symbol that I have on there for you. So you're going to enter these answers. You're going to try number eight. All right, so last thing you have to determine is, is this a function? Well, if you draw vertical lines, it's not going to cross it more than once. So yes, this is a function. So you're just going to type in yes or select if it's a function. So now you're going to go do one through six. You're going to type in number seven, and you're going to try number eight. And if you have questions, then I'm here for you to ask. You're also going to have a short assignment to follow this up with. This is just part one of section 4.1. All this stuff you'll do again in algebra 2.